People, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday, September 12th. It's such a pleasure to have you all here, part of this virtual conversation on awesome people. Uh, it's going to be a great episode tonight. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, my guest is actually from the land down under, and I'll get to the guest in a second. But before that, as uh, Iranians, we have some great news in the United States. Uh, the Massa Act actually passed the House uh, today, which is a very monumental day. There's so many people that worked so much, so long, so hard, so diligently, so passionately, so patriotically um, to make sure the word gets out. So we are now uh, at, a, at a much better place than we were. Uh, and you know that means that there's bipartisan support for this bill that will hopefully um, <clears throat> limit the strengths and the power and the evil of the Islamic regime. So kudos to uh, everybody involved in making uh, that happened. So I'm grateful for that great news. God knows that we need great news, especially as we're approaching uh, Gina Massa Amini's one year anniversary of her uh, murder, her death, her unjustly death, her untimely death, uh, what really sparked the entire woman life freedom revolution. And I encourage you once again, humbly encourage you that wherever you are in the world, please find the nearest uh, protest or vigil or anything that's honoring Massa Gina Amini. You're not just honoring uh, a Shirzan, a true lioness in our in our um, history now at this point, but you're honoring the more than six, seven hundred uh, innocent Iranians that have been murdered, the the more than twenty thousand Iranians that have been uh, detained unjustly, that have been uh, under physical abuse, mental abuse, torture, um, all in the name of um, freedom and liberty. And if you're in the Miami area. We're going to be at South Point Park. We're going to be at the Lighthouse, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, 7 p.m. if you're local. Um, uh, we have a flyer that I posted in my in my feed uh, last week. I keep on sharing it. Please tell everybody, come together. Uh, let's do some, some prayers, some poetry. Let's do some remembrance and uh, bring your candles. Uh, and hopefully we will, um, we will um, not enjoy, but at least uh, find comfort. And, and being amongst each other and, and um, unifying together and uh, and remembering um, this young soul that has been um, the face of this revolution. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think it's time to welcome our, our guest. His name is Dr. Hu Tan Shah. He's joining us all the way from the land down under uh, in Australia, in case you don't know what that means. Uh, Hu Tan is a vet by day and an operatic singer by night. <clears throat> He's had a busy few years since migrating from Iran to Australia in 2009, and he successfully opened his own veterinary hospital in 2021 and has been dubbed as Hutan the Singing Vet as he heals his furry patients uh, through song, through music, through so much love, through so much um, genuine passion for, for animals. And if, you've, if you follow his page, which I highly recommend that you do, um, you just know that this person is madly in love with, uh, with, with animals, and it's a beautiful thing to, to see. On top of that, and as it relates to what I just talked about with regards to uh, Gina Massa Amini and the Woman Life Freedom Revolution, as an operatic singer, he's taken part in several charity performances in support of animal rights and human rights, and since September 2022, last year, he has devoted all of his spare time to raising awareness and funds for the victims of the Woman Life Freedom Movement, and... Um, I think it's time to welcome this awesome patriot, this awesome human right activist, this awesome um, um, animal right activist. And right off the top, I want to thank Anna Ware. She's been so gratefully, uh, I'm so grateful for the amount of time and effort she's been putting in to be a co-producer of awesome people. She's also from Australia and she's the one that connected uh, me and recommended Hutan. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, please help. Vet all the way from Aussie land. <clears throat> it's Australia, so the connection takes a little bit longer than usual. Durut Hi. How, How are, are you going? I'm good. Can you can you hear me okay? Uh, uh, yes, I just need to turn the volume a little bit off. All right. Perfect. All right, good to have you on Awesome People, my friend. How are you? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Of course. I can, I can hear your furry pets already. You said they were barking. 
and there they are. They they they're rooting for Papa. <laughs> <laughs> When I start any conversation, they think someone came in, so they start to bark. That's right. Well, there, there's there's a few people that are coming into this conversation, and they want to get to know Dr. Hutan Shah a little bit. For those who don't have the pleasure of knowing anything about you, would you mind um, giving a little background? Also, if you don't mind, if you can, bring your camera down a little bit so that we get a little bit of your good-looking face. There we go. Perfect. So go ahead and uh, give us a little background for anyone who, who might not know you. Sure. Um, my name is Hutan Shah Hosseini, and uh, uh, just to make it shorter, I made it as Hutan Shah. Uh, I was born in Iran in 1980, and um, I always loved to be a vet, and uh, was a practicing veterinarian in Iran. I always wanted to be a small animal practitioner, so um, especially that time, there was not enough opportunity for me, so I was always dreaming um to to pursue more career um uh, abroad and and uh with the combination of other things with uh freedom of expression and the way you want to live i decided to migrate to australia and then um i had to study again in melbourne university in 2011 um, i got registered again after two years um uh, to to become a practicing vet in australia and uh, in 2021, I opened my own hospital, uh, which uh, uh, in a few months is going to be second anniversary, and been busy with that. Also, I always had the passion of uh, music and singing. Uh, uh, my my parents both very big on music and singing, and my dad was a, a theater um, writer and uh, director. Uh, so it, it was a kind of uh, a, a middle class class family but also very cultural and and arty and um i started um uh, singing uh first with late maestro muhammad nuri a uh, famous singer of john and mariam uh, for a couple of years uh, and uh, that that was one of my uh, best time of life and i'm very privileged to be taught by him and then um, I started um, uh, elementary operatic classical singing uh, from uh, Maestro Rashid Vatandus. He's the uh, famous tenor singer of a Iran, a Marzabur Gohar. The most famous tenor version is a song by him. And uh, after moving to Australia, it, it took a few years to, to get back on track and taking lessons. Uh, since 2013, it's been 10 years um, constant ongoing learning and um, Almost once a week, still I go and, and train and, and get taught by my teachers. And uh, I've done some concerts, um, some casual, some, some more formal. Um, and uh, majority of them were um, charity fundraiser concerts for Wildlife Victoria, for animal shelters. Um, 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 also, um, I, I had a pleasure of uh, performing in a a very small operatic uh, uh, opera fusion company which which fused uh, contemporary music with opera called uh, emotion war cuts opera uh, uh, in in one of the production which which was called um, la beatles bohem which was a fusion of the beatles songs and and la bohem awesome. and yeah last 12 months um, all music activity has been absolutely devoted uh, to support uh, um, uh, Iranian people um, uh, of uh, uh, basically inside of Iran, uh, the uh, the way I can. That's amazing. First of all, we share the same birth year. What month were you born? Um, um it's it's very weird in in Western countries when I, when you say my real birth date is different from uh, the from certificate because yeah, yeah I, because. Easily you could change it. I was crying and I wanted to go to a school, so they easily change it for three months. But I don't say it here because it sounds very weird and illegal. But um, I, I was born in in fourth of um, December in Oza. Oh, okay. uh, but but they changed it uh, to twenty second of September easily three months earlier. So um, they 
they could have me, you know, stop whinging and crying, uh, pushing to go to a school because my older brother was there. Uh, so, yeah, my real birthday is 4th of December. Well, e either way, we're 1980 babies. That's, uh, but I'm, I'm May 31st. I, I just found that to be interesting. All right, so listen, there, there's two different things that I'm so intrigued about that I want to get into. Um, obviously, there's the veterinary part, and then there's the whole music part that ties into the revolution. Um, what I'm going to do to figure out which route to go first is ask you, what do you love more? Would you say that you love the veterinary aspect and animals more? Or is it singing and performing that you love more? Or is it exactly half and half? Would you give an advantage over one of them? Don't worry, no one's listening. Yeah. Uh, in terms of um, um, kind of career, I, I would say veterinary. When I started um, my my concerts this year, some of my clients say, "Oh, you're touring, and um, are you going to stop working? Are, are we going to miss you as a vet?" And I said, "No. If I'm going to 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 be a professional, I would love to be always a uh, professional veterinarian. Um, so um, if I want to look as a job, I, I love my job, and it's a job that that." Uh, uh, is is a part of my entity, and um, um, even when I go on holidays, I basically miss uh, being in contact with animals. And random, they ask people that they're walking their dogs um, to let me to hug their dogs and kiss their dogs. And uh, I'm crazy about what I'm doing. And um, at the same time, uh, music is my passion. I never um, thought about it as as a, 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 a full-time professional singer, but I always thought about it to take it to the uh, to a serious uh, stage and and um, pursue it as as serious as I can. Um, at the same time, it's a very good um, emotional release and and hobby uh, to get rid of the day-to-day -day stressors. So um, it's it's very good for my mental health, especially for for the job we do uh, as as veterinarians. It's a very intense, high-stress um, job. So I think uh, singing is amazing to alleviate those well, issues. I mean, it seems like, so obviously vet is more the career, but you're fortunate enough to have another passion that is also a great hobby, which is a singing. And how wonderful is that, that you have this perfect balance of a hobby that you're also great at, that is also fueling your passion. But let's start with um, the veterinary stuff. Where did your love for animals and, and when did you decide that, you know what, this is what I would love to do as a career. I want to grow up and heal animals like were you around a lot of animals when you were younger were you like in a farm area how were you exposed to animals where the love with animals derived from yeah um it's weird um, um, um you know when you ask uh, people especially this sort of jobs that that is involved with some um, um attractive things like pets um, dogs cats horses that all people love you may uh, get a very cliche response that oh since i was a child i always loved animals and you know which which is a bit cliche but to be honest um opposite to most uh, kids that as they grow they change their mind 100 times um when i was um four or five years old uh, five year five years old um in iran it was um during the war be between iran and iraq and 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 uh, uh, very uh, the first um decade after Islamic Revolution, which um, there was not much to watch in, in TVs, uh, but there was a TV series um, of a young veterinarian. It was an English TV series, um, and obviously because it was all about animals, uh, it was approved to be to, to be shown in, in TV. And uh, that young vet was, was trying to prove himself to the older vet, which was a bully, and it was involved in treating all the animals and different species. And uh, since I saw that, I said, I'm going to be a vet. I never changed it. Um, um, the only pet I had um, um, in a urban Tehran uh, was was a little chicken called Jirjir, -Jir. and um, I, I raised her like a real pet, which came to me, brought her uh, beak to my face, and uh, get patted. And, and I, um, I, I can say really, really confidently that even chickens can can make the make amazing pets, and all animals. Um, have have emotions and and uh, senses. Um, they my my parents never um, let me have you know dogs and cats and real pets. I remember that many times I smuggled animals into the house and and tried to push them, but it was one day or two day 
maximum. Um, and uh, I, I just kept pursuing this dream and, and uh, then I started in Iran. Uh, and when I came to Australia, the path was extremely hard because um, opposite to dentistry and, and, and uh, medical science that um, the standards and the, um, also the details that you learn is pretty much the same. In Iran, especially if you are out practicing in a certain area, you are not um, uh, um, necessarily practicing on all animals. So it gets rusty, you're a horse practitioner or cattle practitioner, and then you come to, to, to a country like Australia, they ask you about everything. You've got to know uh, theory and, and also pass practical ex exams on horse, cattle, um, you know, even pig that, that is prohibited in Iran. They, they, you know, you don't even get taught about pigs. Um, and it, it's, it's a very, very expensive and time-consuming uh, way. And uh, many people told me, you know, you, you are 27, 28, you want to start from zero in Australia, um, just, just forget it, do something else, just, just get your casual job. Uh, and while I was doing that, uh, I said, no, I, I was born to do this, this is, this is the job of my life. And, and um, I, I started hard and, and went to uni and, and uh, did the course again, not the whole course, they gave me some credits obviously, and, uh, and become a veterinarian again. So that was the path um, from the beginning. Well, not to mention the fact that <clears throat> I'm assuming that when you went in 2019 from Iran to Australia, you probably didn't have that much of a, the English language um, to kind of help you. So you had you to battle not just a, a educational path that was more challenging than what you were accustomed to, but also you were just learning a new language, a new culture, uh, a, a new country. How, how difficult was it? And, and how do you, looking back, um, mm. what, what, what did you go through? That, that must have been incredibly yeah. um, impactful. Mm. To be honest with you, um, um, I'm, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm coming from a middle class um, um, cultural family. We were, we were not very rich, we were not poor, but uh, we didn't have the opportunity uh, to, to have, um, you know, private singing, uh, sorry, um, English classes. And um, um, what uh, we learned was through school and, and our self uh, pace of studying. So my English uh, wasn't my strongest point uh, when I came to Australia. I was pretty good um, in, in uh, medical and veterinary terminology, but not in day-to-day -day conversation. And, and um, in Iran, even though the, the, the English um, teaching um, in the schools is, is pretty poor and it's not taken serious, but, but it's more like uh, American accent. And uh, when I came to Australia with Aussie accent, it was another level. I felt even what I knew is, is not applicable here and I couldn't you know anything more than normal conversation I, I had a lot of issue and <clears throat> it took a while even even when I went to uni and um, uh, sometimes uh, I just saw the movement of the mouth of the lecture but I had to go home and, and listen and listen and, and read the notes to, to work it out. And, I, and that was one of my stressors that when I graduate, uh, is English is going to be good enough to, to have a conversation with people and uh, they trust you. Um, and that was a very big challenge. Uh, still, I know uh, that my English is pretty average and especially when it comes to academic writing, uh, and grammar, my skills are pretty awful, but uh, it, it's a day-to-day -day, uh, progress, and and that that was a real real challenge. New generation, they are much better. They access to internet in Iran. They watch you know famous um, TV series all the time. Their English is amazing, yeah. uh, but that wasn't the case for me. What about um, the fact that you mentioned briefly the fact that you know there's no discussion of pigs inside of Iran. Uh, and uh, and you know, we all know, especially in the past year, I feel like this revolution shed a big spotlight on um, the disregard for dogs, you know, and, and how it's illegal to have dogs. Um, tell, tell us more about how you felt growing up in Iran, being such a lover of animals and seeing certain animals like dogs being excluded from the entire society. And then going to Australia, where I hope and assume that dogs are beloved like the rest of the world. What, I'm very curious about your thoughts about dogs and some animals that you were not exposed to until you came to Australia. Yeah. <clears throat> to be honest, um, when I was in Iran, I was predominantly um, a dairy practitioner. 
um, and and uh, um, my knowledge um, was was more f um, around that that area. But with all respect to to poultry and dairy practice and and production animals, I had um, a sense of pity always with me that I don't want to be a, a kind of um, um, a doctor that is more focused on economy. Um, you know, even in Australia, if you've got a cow and, and it's not getting pregnant and it's not producing enough milk, the farmer says, as a, they, they, they say that as a joke, send it to McDonald's. So, you know, they, that's, you know, as long as it produces, it's good. Even the cost of treatment it is going to, to be not financially viable and, and justifiable. They, they don't do anything. So um, I wanted to to practice medicine, to put my stethoscope there, take blood tests, you know, do ultrasound, do chemotherapy, give them a chance, you know, um, and, um, and that that was the main reason that I always wanted to be a small animal practice, be be a vet for for animals that they are a member of the family, no matter, you know, it can be a cow as a, as a you know, backyard cow, and not, not production lines. So that, there was no opportunity there. There was, there was lots of small animal clinics, but, but as you mentioned, the, the political situation um, made it very hard for, for those vets to work. So um, you simply stay away because you know that you are going to have lots of hardship. And, and that was one of the main reasons because I wanted to do something that I love you know, having passion every day to go to work. Um, and certainly that was a big part. If, if someone asked me, you know, uh, uh, what are your biggest dreams, um, which, which I, I really need to, to be thankful of that, was, was practicing as a, as a registered veterinarian um, in, in a country that, that people can have pets, um, uh, like a member of the family, um, uh, freely, and um, they, and, and culturally, they they are happy to to take care of them as the member of the family. So I was always dreaming to to become a vet in a country like Australia, and even better if 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 I could have had the same chance in my own you know mother country, which which unfortunately I didn't. And and um, so <clears throat> it it was massive. Uh, and when I went to the uni, I realized that it's a different level. Uh, different re level of medical care, and um, um, so I, um, I'm very blessed, um, and at the same time, um, I, I feel sad that you know amazing veterinarians uh, in Iran, um, um, they they've got these hardships, but um, but certainly it's a big difference. Well, you're doing a great uh, job of being uh, the voice of an Iranian vet and being a great example. So let's fast forward to. 2000 and uh, I guess it was 2021. You said when you opened up your your own um, yeah uh, vet, veterinary hospital. So 12 years into you being in this country, um, how, how, that, that's that's a quick turnaround to assimilate to a new country and 10 11 years later open up your own hospital. How how has that experience been? Now that for two years you've had your own hospital, I can only assume that it was like a dream come true uh, to open it up. So tell us more about that journey. And then let me know if you've had any kangaroos, any koalas come into it. I'm very curious. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> that, was, that was certainly my second dream, uh, to have uh, my own business and, um, um, and, and run it the way I want. The mental health is, is really, really a big, big issue in, in veterinary industry. And it's pretty much the same in America, and and um, and and yeah, and vets they they've got highest one of the highest suicide rates. Um, it's it's involved with first there is no Medicare, there is no government subsidy, so so people come in already stressed. They know that the cost is high, and they think that all the vets are printing money and and uh, all the money that they get charged um, uh, goes you know to the to the vets. Um, account, uh, but uh, what they don't know that is any 
any procedure basically is four times at least more expensive in, in medical industry. But because there is Medicare, especially in Australia, they don't feel it. Uh, and they just go go and, and see their doctor and uh, th there is no out of pocket. So uh, the pressure is on vet. And um, sometimes uh, the vet see the reactions. Um, and um, also euthanasia is another very, very um, a mental um, draining thing for us and um, um, we know the the reason behind that uh, and uh, that's uh, very good to justify to go through that and help people to say um, uh, final goodbyes to, to their beloved uh, pets uh, very gracefully however um, it never gets easy it never gets easy especially when when you get old with them you know when you see a pop from the beginning and now that that pup is a 15 years old or 14 years old dog or a, or a kitten that now is 15 years and you gotta say goodbye somehow they are like your own pets it's not easy to to perform that uh, I had a discussion with some doctors about euthanasia even those that they are pro euthanasia and freedom of euthanasia for human if they want it for and you know uh, like in the stage conditions they say they say but we don't want to perform it ourselves. We are happy if, if they let it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go to the room and inject it. They should make make a robotic, you know, automatic or get a nurse or whoever is happy to do it. I can't look look into my you know patient's eyes and say goodbye and inject um, overdose of anesthetic. So they know how hard is that, and we are doing that multiple times a week. Uh, so this this is another thing. So with those things that I mentioned, I just want to get back to 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 that stressors and say um, because of that i always dreamt i need to make a practice and make it like a family People, you know all this stuff love each other support each other no boss and employee relationship uh, i consider like um, all my stuff like my brothers and sisters and we i run it like a family i love them to my heart and they they do the same and i think that's that that's the best leadership um instead of um hierarchy and enforcing because I know that this industry is already very stressful we should we should support each other and be like a family and then any anyone comes through that doors we always think if this is your dog if this is your cat what would you do do the same for them um, don't don't look at them as numbers don't look at them as as business if if you do uh, what what you do with honesty and with wholeheartedly um, Trust and, and more prosperity comes automatically. You don't need to, to think about it. Um, so that was my dream. That was my goal, how to run my business. And, and since um, I opened the business, um, it, it, it was a, an amazing ride. And um, uh, day by day, uh, we, we get unbelievable um, Google reviews. Um, um, we are the only um, uh, veterinary hospital um, I think in Melbourne with uh, over 400 five-star reviews uh, still, uh, which is very rare because sometimes people just upset and give you one star just because the procedure is expensive and, you know, we, we understand. But, but we, we've been very, very blessed that, that being very well known and people will receive those and we are growing. And sometimes um, I, when I speak with my wife, which I'm very grateful of, her support because when I came to Australia, she has, she she applied um, as as an English to Persian translator and supported me all all way through, and and um, um, while I came as a spouse and and had opportunity to study, uh, sometimes we we sit and talk and I say I can't believe that now I have um, you know seven employees and uh, I, I can give the opportunity someone like me that came in and you know very very low English very stressful degree wasn't recognized, 0 0.0, and now uh, I'm an employer, and I can give the opportunity to to have some locals around me and, and, and give it back to the community, which, which, which is something very, very uh, amazing, and, and I'm very great, grateful for that. I love that. I mean, it's clear that you're, you're, you're leading a great practice with, uh, and leading it with love and sincerity. That's amazing. Uh, you know, you brought up something that I, I honestly had never even thought of. I never thought about um, the the mental challenges, uh, the mental health challenges that um, vets, they go through. My question to you is, what kind of advice do you have for other vets that 
are are right now struggling with exactly what you're saying um and they don't know like what to do with these feelings that they're having what recommendation mm. do you have uh first of all i think um as, as they say we are not trees we can move so if you are um working in an environment that is toxic it's it's not worth it to stay no matter how much they pay you no matter how much you love your your um colleagues some of colleagues and, and clients if if you're affected and you think the the work culture or the when the where the practice is running is the main reason you gotta move on and the second thing seek professional advice never as uh, think that you know even in veterinary industry i can see that if if you give, give the strongest painkillers or antibiotics there is no resistance but when, when it comes to dogs um, or cats that they've got anxiety separation anxiety and they need to be on um uh, antidepressant anti-anxiety many pet owners resist and um, and that that um stigma is, is in in human health too some people just suffer and also they can they can become aggressive and nervous and annoy you know beloved ones around them uh, but they don't seek professional advice because they think oh i'm not going to take tablets for my my mental status which is absolutely wrong when when you've got these issues you gotta seek professional advice you gotta um um you know especially as a, as a veterinarian um you, you're a, a you know man and woman of science so if if you know the work environment is the reason move on and also seek professional advice don't be shy of of, of uh, taking medicine or seeing psychiatrists or psychologists i know many people that they are absolutely normal but but they see uh, a psychologist every three months just to to have a better life just to have a better solid um vision about life and and take the next steps uh very confidently that's, i mean that's great advice i feel like for for what you just said is great advice for anybody that's going through a tough time to be able to um, seek the advice and assistance of professionals. And I love what you said about we're not trees, you know, moving around of toxic environments. That's um, awesome advice. All right, my friend, we're gonna, we're gonna transition now to the other passion that you have, which you have tremendous talents for. And if guests stick around, they're gonna get a sample of it very shortly too. And that is the singing, the operatic part. Uh, and I wanna really kind of focus predominantly on the past year. I mean, we would be remiss if we don't acknowledge the Woman Life Freedom Revolution that we're inside of it. Um, I know as somebody that has left the country in 2009, I don't know if it was before or during the Green Revolution, but you were, you were definitely leaving at a time where the country was at one of its highest lows or lowest of highs. Um, tell us what you've been doing for the past year and, <coughs> and, and what kind of triggered it, what prompted it, what's fueling it and what's coming up uh, uh, first of all and uh, please excuse me for clearing the throat and and, and uh, small coughs all the time because i've got asthma and in winter it, it it is much worse so especially in the morning and that's why but i try my best not to do it very frequently no um look um when um when this tragedy happened we're all affected by that and um any human being you know not just iranians it it, it was heartbreaking it uh, and uh, you couldn't say you know this is not my problem or um um this is iranians problem this is this is humanity problem and and um Mahsa Jina Amini was was an example that that uh went through the internet and social media but that that wasn't the first one and and not the last one and um, so we were all shattered affected and um, so sad outraged angry furious um, so like others as much as i could uh, we were taking part in in protests and and i'm very fortunate to to have an amazing friend called misal zamani and actually he is an amazing person i think um, um to to have an interview with you he he is uh, coming from a uh, baha'i faith background and um so the, it doesn't need to explain how 
hard his life as a Baha'i in Iran. And um, he, he went to Turkey and through you and he came to Australia. And um, he's a music genius. He, he plays, I think, around 20 musical instruments. And, um, and um, a, a superb pianist, but you just name it, he plays it. And sometimes, um, um, you know, famous pop, pop stars, when they come to Australia, if they've got, for example, a shortage, they say, oh, we need a saxophonist. And they call Mr. And he says, oh, I don't know how to play that, but if you buy me a saxophone and give me three months time, I'm going to, to play it. And he go on a stage and play it for, 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 yeah, and he go on a stage and play it for Andy. And um, uh, so uh, he, he is like that. He, he, he is different level. And interestingly, he's, he is a medical ultrasonographer. So music is his passion, but he he's in his next level. I was really privileged, a singer, especially classical singer, if it doesn't get matched with a good pianist, doesn't go very far. So I'm very blessed to have Misog as a, as a brother, as a friend, as a very close friend with me. And one day when I came from protest very early on, um, I called to him and said, I'm, I'm coming to your home. And, and I sat down and I said, Misog, this is, this is a, a poem that, that I wrote for Master. Uh, and I really want, want you to make music on it. And, and we sat down. He just in the moment I started to 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 make some samples and 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 we we were just talking and working on that I, I i was just you know giving my opinion i'm not a composer but he basically made the structure in one hour meeting with me with with reading the poem and i, I was telling that i don't want being sad i want to be more persuasive energetic i don't i we are not going to mourn. We are not going to show weakness. And he, with chords and music, was showing me that that thing. What is that? How is that? Do you like this? And I was just like, wow. And and then he worked on it. And when we went to the studio, some of them were electronic sampling. Some of them, you know, many of the uh, instruments he played it himself and and recorded and 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 released it. And and the, the name of the song was. Um, uh, it's it's in a, in my YouTube channel and, and Instagram and basically means um, the next future um, savior of Iran is a woman uh, just to, to support woman life freedom and also um, I've got amazing uh, friends um, of um, really academic elites and doctors that they they have a registered NGO in Melbourne called Women Life Freedom Melbourne that that they've been running lots of events uh, to support. Uh, people of Iran and and I we we sang that song in one of one of their um, events and then we came up to to an idea on why not we do charity concerts uh, and um, that the money all goes to people injured affected um, in in these recent issues so we just put it together and and Katie Turbitt, she's a professional soprano. That that we when I started learning classical singing, we we shared the same teacher. And in that a small opera role that I discussed with you um, earlier, La Beatles, Bohem, we sang together. And um, and I, I I had a chat with her. And I said, look, this is the plan. I had a dream. It was always in my mind that a soprano with a tenor mixture of classical and Persian contemporary and the classical and um, those that old people love even those that classical singing is not their uh, cup of tea like Andrea Bocelli's songs and some famous uh, music theater songs and Iranian songs more songs that that are on Western uh, scales so it's not very exotic so people easily can can get engaged with that and I don't want um, a Persian speaking as a first language soprano. I would rather to broaden this and have the impact. English speaking soprano comes in to support us, give us more audience, and take the challenge of learning Persian to how to pronounce it, how to sing it. And, and she loved it. And, and, and we joined, we, we rehearsed, and we had an amazing concert in, in Melbourne um, and in, in May. And then uh, right after that, <coughs> we received invitations. She, she is your Sarah Brightman. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
she is indeed. I'm, I'm not as good as Andrea Bocelli, but she is indeed. Um, you, and you, you, and then you created this amazing duo. I mean, I saw a couple of the performances, and the pianist was amazing too. It was a it was a phenomenal. I wish I was there to see it in person. Hopefully, in the future. But continue. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. N and no worries. And and um, and then right after that. Um, people came to us, many people said, we've never been in such an amazing, thoughtful, um, inspirational, inspiring um, concert. That, that, that is music, um, it's, it's, it's a really top class uh, of music, artistic, and also for a good cause, and at the same time, you're delivering really serious, deep messages. And, and we didn't know, even after lots of things, still many people didn't know. So it's, it's a very good public awareness at the same time, because we've got a slideshow, and I, we dedicate the songs, and we, we, we talk about that. We, we, we've got an amazing MC and, and poets that, that sing, um, uh, sorry, um, uh, read amazing um, 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 poems uh, in the intervals and, and intro. And, and, and right after, um, not only we, we received unbelievable feedbacks uh, from all over the world, whoever managed to, to see, uh, also, we had invitations, you know, come come to Brisbane, come to Sydney. And um, we ended up uh, doing a second concert in Brisbane. And hopefully in, in January, we are going to Sydney. Uh, we are planning with uh, Woman Life, Freedom Melbourne and Misak to, to brand our our band instead of just name it, Hutan and Misak and Katie are joining together for a concert, branding with the name um, and as an artistic band. So. Um, we can we can market it better, and this band and this name is going to be solely devoted for um, uh, uh, no for profit, absolutely charity concerts. And um, I myself, as much as I can afford, um, um, even wherever I go, I try to to pay for my flight and accommodation and everything, um, just to make sure that uh, there is more money at the end of the day in the concert. Um, for people and and amazing things has been done the good thing is melbourne uh, woman life uh, freedom melbourne uh, many of the members are our doctors specialist doctors and and you know they had degrees in iran and then came to australia and pursued their careers they've got very good links there with with other doc doctors so they can safely uh, find and 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 treat people that that they need like prosthetic limbs or injured eyes and um, and um, so far they've done amazing jobs uh, very detailed very documented very open um, um, and they they even though we never ask and they they were reporting to us showing all, all the things but I said to them when I see those photos or videos it breaks my my heart I don't need to show me who is um, uh, got the money or uh, who is treated i'm just proud to be a part of that a small part of that uh, wouldn't happen with these amazing people uh, around us um, um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm just happy doing that i don't i don't need to know um, uh, the exact uh, people or the images uh, yeah, but it's a very clear process with with amazing people uh, that uh, that i'm very privileged to to be a part of that hopefully uh, we are hoping that that do the same concerts in in USA in in Europe. Um, you know, where, wherever they they invite us, like we are we are up for it. This needs to be a world tour, basically. So now you know we, we're talking about all the type of music and these performances. And I know that you don't have your your group here. You don't have messed up here. You don't have uh, the lovely lady. But I think that you did want to treat our viewers with uh, at least one song. I know it's morning. I know you got your asthma, but uh, if you don't mind giving us the pleasure of a, of a sample of what they can expect from Dr. Hutan, the vet singer. No worries. Um, look, um, I try my best, as I t told you earlier, with asthma and, and early morning, uh, not very early now, but uh, uh, my voice is at the moment raspy and coughing, so wouldn't be the best quality, but I hope that uh, all the audience uh, forgive me with their kindness and ignore all, all the pitfalls. Um, um, I, I I would love to sing the most favorite uh, song from my most favorite singer Farhad Mehrad, Yek um, Shabe uh, a Moonlight Night. And Farhad um, um, songs, all of them. When I when I uh, listen to them, 
it's it's like it's uh, they were made for today majority of them and um, they never get old because uh, the problem um, uh, um, exists and um, when when you are a, um, a artist uh, and make art uh, for society um, that that art never dies and and it's for humanity and as long as the dictatorship and um, unfairness exists those songs and those poems still have their own impact and um, so um, uh, one of my dreams is actually resinging some of Farhad songs in combination with our uh, productions uh, in a in a different way, like a classical pop singing, more powerful. Uh, I hope one day I, I could do that. So I think I think Yeshave uh, Mahtab in my own style, if you don't mind. Yeshave Mahtab, Mahmiya Tukhab, Mano Mi Bara Kuche Be Kuche. باغ انگوری باغ آلوچه در به در صحرا به صحرا اونجا که شبا پشت بیشه ها یه پری میاد ترسون و لرزون پاشو میذاره تو آب چشمه شونه میکنه موی پریشون یه شب محتاب ماه میاد تو خواب منو میبره ته اون دره اونجا که شبا یکه و تنها تک درخت بیت شاد و پرمی میکن به ناز دست شادراز تا یه ستاره به چکه مثل یه چیکه بارون به جای میوست سر یه شاخش به شاویزون شب محتاب ماه میاد تو خواب منو میبره توی زندون مثل شپر با خودش بیرون میبره اونجا که شب سیاه تا دم شهر سریدای شهر با فانوس خون جار میکشن تو خیابونا سر میدونا امو یادگار مرد کین دار خوابی آبی دار مستی آهشیار خوابی ما بیدار شهیدای شهر مستی ما حشیار شهیدای شهر آخرش یه شب ماه میاد بیرون از سر اون کوه بالای دره از روی میدون رد میشه خندون یه شب ماه میاد Wow, that was, that was incredible. Thank you Thank so much, Doc. Thank you. Wow, I actually never even heard of that song before, and that was incredibly powerful. Thank you. I, I can't, I, Thank you. I can't I wait to it. check out the uh, Far Farhad Mehrad, you said, correct? Farhad Mehrad, which basically um, was was known just as Farhad. They, they started um, oh, no. the, yes. the first Black Cats with, with with Ebi and yeah. Shahram and Farah, they were singing I English songs together. I last name, that's why. I was like, Farhad, I knew, but I Oh, know. yes. <laughs> yes, Farhad. Yeah, famous oh, Farhad. Yeah, late yeah. Farhad. That's incredible. Yesha, 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 amazing. All right, I'm definitely going to check it out. Well, my friend, um, that was very moving. And uh, I can only imagine how, how much better it would sound in an auditorium with your entire group. And I hope that you get to continue performing this in as many cities around the world. Uh, you have such an incredible story and an even bigger heart 
for animals, for humans, for our fellow compatriots. I'd love for you to end this conversation uh, with any message. Feel free to use this opportunity to speak from your heart to their ears. Absolutely. First of all, that was that, that was a pleasure um, um, to, to be here and this having this conversation with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I, I, I truly do appreciate that. Um, and if you don't mind, I, I, I give my final talks um, in English and then, and, and then in Farsi, Persian. Sure. Sure. Um, um, uh, I think um, the most important, I'm, I'm, I'm too little to give any message uh, to, to people and I'm learning from people. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled to be here, so I, I don't I don't take myself too seriously, and um, I'm, I'm not uh, teaching anyone. But um, I would love to see um, connection and unity, and um, and uh, to see um, people, uh, you know, Iranian and diaspora, and also um, inside of Iran, that they they have unity with love um, of each other. And, and, and their country um, uh, without um, any possible differences in their political view. Um, love each other, be together, be connected, uh, be, be united. Um, that's, that goes very far. That's the power of love. And um, that's the only way that, that uh, um, we can succeed. Man, do storam ke اینجا بگم من به هیچ گروه سیاسی خاصی نزدیکی و فعالیت من برای هیچ جهت جدگیری سیاسی نیست من واقعا دوست دارم که ما ایرانی ها فارغ از اینکه به چه گروهی علاقه داریم به چه, چه منش سیاسی داریم دینمون چیه زبانمون چیه عاشق باشیم پشت هم باشیم هوای همو داشته باشیم وقتی که um, um, Iman um, gives me this offer to, to, to go, go to, um, on her stage and, and share my love. I shouldn't think about uh, who is he? Is, is he a Muslim? Is he Baha'i? Is he Christian? Um, is he close to this, this political group or that? No, I don't care about that. We need to, to, to be close. We need to go to a different level. And, and, and deeper level, we are all human beings, and also all Iranians, no matter their, their different cultures and languages and, and, and backgrounds and, and ethnicity and, and religion, we should be united, love each other, support each other to get the best best outcome. So that's, that's, that's my only humble uh, request, uh, because I can see that um, uh, many energy is wasted by, by basically um, 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 Scrutiny, uh, scrutinizing uh, people's political view or religion or background and, and not sticking together uh, powerful. Power comes with unity and love and, and we can do it. I love it, Ruta and John. Uh, wonderful words of unity, encouragement, love and kindness. I would have expected anything else uh, from you after what I've been seeing um, from your social media. And I want to thank Anna again for uh, connecting me to you. It's been a pleasure getting a glimpse into all the awesome things that you've been doing. And I'm, I'm going to continue rooting for you and anything that we can do to advance what you're doing in your field of the veterinary world <clears throat> or what you're doing from the uh, revolutionary aspect. Uh, you have my full support and anything that I can do from 10,000, 15,000 miles or however far apart that we are. We're connected through the internet and I'm here to do whatever I can to continue to put a spotlight on you, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, that was, uh, again, why my absolute pleasure to be here. And no matter how far we are, I think our hearts are very close. I'm very, very blessed that through this, this platform found an amazing friend like you. And, and certainly we, we keep in touch, and, and that would be my pleasure. And um, um, I'm, I, I say thank you for all your audiences uh, for having me, and I hope that I enjoyed the conversation and I didn't uh, bother their ears with my loud <laughs> singing, and I hope they enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Hutan Shah, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. We appreciate him joining us, and as he 
uh, exits from this IG Live. I just want to give a friendly reminder. This Saturday in Miami, we're going to be getting together to celebrate the one year passing of Gina Massa Amini. Uh, that's Miami, 7 p.m., South Point Park, uh, by the Lighthouse. Feel free to check out the post in my feed for more information. Uh, it's also um, being shared in my story as much as possible. But wherever you are in the world, I do hope that you make time this Saturday to go somewhere and be amongst other Iranians, be amongst other people that are fighting for human rights, women rights, um, the woman life uh, freedom revolution, and um, just being the most loudest collective voice that you can be uh, because the Iranian people really need you. Um, and I hope that we can truly make um, um, the most amount of impact this Saturday so that this revolutionary flame continues to um, stay alive. And hopefully we can see the, the end of um, this regime that has taken our country hostage for 44 years. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Appreciate you all again and hope to see you soon at the next episode of Awesome People. If you want to recommend or, or suggest a, a candidate to be a guest on Awesome People, please DM me. You can also email info at letsuniteandconquer.com. We'd love to hear from you all. Isn't it great to continue to meet really awesome Iranians? I think so. I hope you do as well. Much love to you guys. Shabakhe, Bo Azadi.